Hello everybody and welcome back to Star Sector. We've got a brown dwarf right next to us and man that thing looks cool up close. Oh, it's slightly lower resolution texture than I was expecting, but I'm not going to lie to you. We have some uh, AI remnants over here. It's from that AI war I mentioned a few episodes ago. I'm, gonna, I'm just doing a bit of exploring around the local region and oh, would you look at that? Uh, this actually wasn't planned, but we've, um, we've uncovered some industrial ruins in another habitable planet. This is like right next to our home. Not quite right next to, close to our home. All those ruins. Now, if we colonize this planet, we can we can restore these ruins, but we don't know what it is yet. Uh, so we have to basically pay the restoration fee, we roll a dice, and we can get one of many um, sort of random potential uh, ancient technologies, right? Which are all, like, really ludicrously powerful. All right, let's just uh, absolutely crush this AI remnant. It got a little bit ballsy, taking me on by itself. This is basically just barely larger than a fighter craft. Kind of, uh, maybe a little bit, uh, it's actually not, it's about frigate sized, I'd say. Or vet sized, to be sure. Let's get, uh, get these guys. Oh, look, oh my, and he's, and he's gone. And he's gone. And he's, he's gone. Bye bye. Yep, 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 yep. You don't go against the omens. You never go up against an omen unless you've got some serious, serious range. Alright, so, I mean, I mean, just, just to give you an idea, uh, that's home. We're here. So the, these systems in this area are not just full of uh, interesting sort of planets to inhabit, they're also full of interesting ruins. Now we did notice at the end of the previous episode that we actually now have the reputation to work for Tritachion, who pays, uh, to put it mildly, dramatically better. Oh god, I dropped into a freaking neutron star? Okay, we are caught in the pulsar beam. Sorry, a pulsar star, not a... Not a not a neutron star. There's a dust world, there's a barren bombardment world. Look, I mean, this is all going to be a bunch of irradiated hell holes. But there is the very off chance... Excuse me, why am I losing money? Because my fleet drew some stockpiles. Okay, Gobi is still running at a loss. That's because it's such a high hazard rating planet. As it gets larger, that will improve. There is a research station on that side, by the look of it. Yep. Ah, 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 ah. No, don't get stuck in the planet. So in order to get in there, we're going to have to come out of... How are we going to do this? We have to wait for the timing to be just right. It's a reset. We're going to have to drop in over this planet really quickly. Okay, so transverse jump. Get me out of here. Go over this gravity well. Drop me in very quickly. Because we've got to get there before that pulsar does. Ah, move, 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 you idiots. Move. Get to the research base. Okay, it looks like its orbit is... It is taking it into the beam, but not right away. All right, what did we get for that trouble? We got a crow wing blueprint. Cool. We got a bone crusher battery blueprint. We got a MOSA, MOA, AMOA, SR class cruiser. Cool. We have a high tech blueprint package. That's one of my favorites. We have the breaker assault focus. Great. I don't know how you install that though. Maybe it's only on fighters. Oh, what did I get? Damaged dampened mount. We'll have to look at, I don't know what that one does. Uh, we got some degeneration cyclers. We got some twin jack heavy slicers. Dude, you could you could wrap these names. All right, I mean I won't. I'll spare you, but you could. No, it's on. It's a pos If you want to do that for yourself, you can. The wing comm suite, huh? Hmm. Can only be installed on strike craft or carriers larger than frigates. Cool. Okay, so we can actually we can make other carriers. Could we make this? Have wing comm? We could. We could, and that would, uh, that way our pilots here would actually have personalities. So they'll level up over time. That's kind of cool. Um, for large carrier craft, that's absolutely worth your time, I think. But I mean, for, for like the four dudes, I, I don't care. All right, so we, we examined the neutron star. That was hell. There's actually uh, another planet right over there. We, I just want to check these out. I was coming down here to do some bounties, and now I'm just thinking, well, hold on. Why don't I just kind of scope out the region? Don't really care about a barren world protected by a Ludic path base, not gonna lie to you. Seems a little above my pay grade for, uh, it is currently 11.54 p.m. on a Tuesday. Drop me in here. Ah, run away, run away, run away, run away, run away. Run away. Okay, the blade breakers are here and they are in force. I would love to, I think we are gonna fight these dudes. I, I want more of their weapons, but I, I want to do it in a more staggered way. Okay, the blade breaker task group. Got a lot of units, but I'm interested to see if we can beat this. Moving to engage, continue, send out the fleet. 
I'm putting out one frigate, I'd rather have two omens. I'd rather have two omens than anything else in life, to be honest. Oh, look at that. Our hammerhead is actually only down to one demod, and our odyssey's down to two. Cool. Yeah, these are all like sort of strike craft sized things, but they do just an obscene amount of damage. But I mean, look at that. That omen, you know, it takes them out. It allows the bigger ships to get in there and do what they need to do. It's such a, it's such a goat. And I don't mean the kite that eats cans. I mean, like, it's the greatest of all time. I feel like I kind of need a support for ships on this side. We have already lost one of our omens. Oh, God. I spoke too soon. We have knocked out one of their fighters in exchange for one of our best weapons. This is a bad sign. This is a bad sign. I need these weapons, dude. That's why we fight these people. It's a high-risk situation, but I mean, we could, we could walk away with some real goodies here. Blast him. Blast him. Get him with the missile. Get him with the missile. Nice. Nice. There we go, pummel him, pummel him. We're getting through that hull. We're getting through that hull. Oh shit, we lost an eradicator. Dude, that's when you know. Okay, bring in bring in the reinforcements, get the shrike in here, get the uh get the Hyperion in there. Well of course we could just we're gonna have to refurbish these guys. We'll pick we'll salvage him again. Get him back into fighting shape. Alright, thank god. Alright, we got one of them down. One of them down. We lost another omen. Uh, I will bring in the Centurion as backup. I don't think it's going to be able to fight it much, but you know what? The girl can dream. Let's get our Kopesh bombers to actually engage something. I, I realize they don't actually fight unless they're like right next to whatever they're shooting at. Oh my god, dude. Those things do a lot of shield damage. Okay, right now I'm kind of just drawing fire, which I'm happy to do, but this won't last forever. Uh, we need to actually kill these things at some point. Run the dampeners, run the dampeners, because we can we can we can drop flux while we dampen. There we go. Okay, we took out one of their spearhead class Leviathan named cruiser. Interesting, interesting. Uh, is these are these something that I can hit with this missile, or is this like just the wrong the wrong caliber of munition? I think it I think it's too slow to really be of any use here. All right, let's get, let's get right up in this thing's grill. I want to dampen. I want to. I want to cancel the dampen. There you go. I want to take some more hits. I want to knock this dude out. Crush him. Crush him, boys. Come on, get in there. Get closer. Get closer. I think I need to install those rail guns on this ship so I get some more range. Because the the 400 meter range of those uh, infrared lasers is really not. It's not doing it for me. I'm a level with you. Okay, yeah, we've knocked him. We've knocked him out. Now is the time. Now is the time. It's been overloaded once more. Hit him with the missile. Hit him with the missile. Yeah, he's no longer overloaded. I right, thank God it's not just the Odyssey against this lot, because uh, they would outmaneuver me. They're so fast. There we go, there we go, there we go. I managed to line up the field of fire. Just right. Perfect. Oh, boy. It took a freaking capital ship to take that thing down. I need, I need to get me some of these. I don't think we can have them, though. I don't think these ships are ever salvageable. Yeah, and I don't know how we'd go about, like, befriending them to so we could buy them. I don't even know if they have bases, to be honest. Look at this thing. It's it's going toe-for-toe -toe with, uh, with this Eradicator, and it's winning. That is an insane flux level. You know what? You just go on autopilot. Cool. All of you can leave. Uh, one by one, please, if you'd be so kind. Just get out of this map. Get out of this map too. Have we have we won? Can I claim victory? No, not yet. Come on, take him out, Odyssey. Take him out. Come on, Odyssey. Come on, come on. What was it? What are you? What are you, what are you called? Not Barbershop. Yeah, Barbershop the third. Let's go. Oh, perfect. And that's the victory. That's the win. All right, we lost quite a bit actually. Two omens hurts. Uh, and that Eradicator I'm going to have to buy back. Eradicator is always worth the money. And we got the high grade Sigma matter though. Alright. Uh, what did we get for Sigma weapons? Another Plasma Volta. I'm a fan of the Plasma Volta. I quite like the Slicer Heavy MG. I like everything they shoot. Oh, here we go. Howl's, Howl Spear Strike Cannons. Gigantic Electrothermal Sniper Weapon. Well. Excuse me, what's that? 
1,200 meter range, 500 damage. Sir, you shouldn't have. You should... Uh, large ballistic slot? What if? What if? Also saves us a few ordnance points. What if? What if I told you the world was going to roll you? Uh, the twin jack heavy slicer could technically fit in here, but I, I don't think we're going to use that. Alright, uh, they are they are attacking me again. We're going to back off just for a second, just to re refurbish. And we're going to see if... Uh, oh, yeah, dude, that's, this thing got messed up. And uh, actually, we got we got pretty pretty injured too. Oh no, it's because we refurbished. That's what it was. Oh uh, well, hold on. While you're getting combat readiness back, why don't we see what else we can change out here? Not much because these weapons all cost an insane amount of ordnance. Okay, I think I'd rather have the peace of mind. There is a fairly bright purple cryovolcanic world over here. We can actually. Investigate, but I think that there is. Oh, I was gonna say, I think there's like a, a bastion protecting it, but it doesn't look like it. We've got the Chassier Multi ASM, a fearsome multiple warhead kinetic support missile used to disrupt enemy formations at range and spike shields. Um, I'm willing to try that out. Let's, uh. I dropped it on the floor. Uh, take all this time, thank you. I'm willing to give that a go. Swap you out for the Chasua MSM when we're at a dry dock, not now. We have a Blade Breaker Bastion. I'm gonna hit a save and then we're gonna attack this thing and I wanna see what we get out of this. Move into engage. Blade Breakers, huh? You don't say. I'm gonna send in. My ship's not quite ready. I'm going to send in everything that's not currently healing. Hunt. I don't really know what to expect from this thing. Except apparently a lot of fire. Oh my god, a lot of fire. Yeah, this might all be a dream. I'm, I'm okay. Yep, 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 yep. Cool, it's got homing, homing beams. That seems fair. That seems completely fair. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God, dude. Look at the fire coming out of this thing. Hold on, hold on. Okay, hold on. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, it was all a dream. Whoa, I, I would never take on the, the Blade Breaker Bastion. No, sir. Not I. Can I talk to them? Uh, very well. If you will not surrender your ships, prepare to be ink sponge from the face of the universe. The grim armored shapes of the Blade Breaker Bastion fill your view screen. A bridge officer rescales a tactical target display so that the entire mass can be seen at once. External pickups indicate no known shipyard in the sector could have produced such an object, but nonetheless it exists and appears to be fully armed and operational. It's a fully armed and operational battle station. The combat analysis system churns for a few seconds and then beeps angrily instead of producing the usual range of tactical recommendations. Oh, okay. Well, the targeting computer doesn't even want to fight it. Like, nah, homie, you go and die. Disengage, leave. Oh, that's gonna that's gonna hurt the supplies. Yep. Ouchie. Okay, time to go home. Ah, I see the I see the warning beacon up there now. A high level warning beacon. Would have been lovely to know. Oh, this 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 takes us straight home. Look at that. You just pop into the damn hyper lane. Thanks, space intestine. Oh my god, is that is that the Ludic fleet? Yep, it's the Ludic fleet. Why why are they sitting right outside my base? Okay, they, you see what I mean? They attacked the blade breakers. Maybe we should leave those there. They're all idiots, so they just they fight the stuff at the entrance of Oh, baby, that was close. All right, but enough lollygagging down south. I think we should head up north here. We should resign our commission with uh, the Cinderian Diktat. In fact, can I just do that here? No, I think I have to, like, go into a system. Maybe, can I just, like, go to Tritachion and be like, Ayo, hire me? Here's my CV. What up? Okay, let's head over to Magek. 
which I notice actually has a Tritachion bounty right now, and see if we can resign our commission in favor of uh, a Tritachion one, because 300 bucks per frigate, that ain't much, dude. You can get like six, 700 bucks if you uh, play it correctly. And then we'll head over to Galatia. Okay, I am... Let's see if they will talk to me. Oh, they also have some officers to hire. Uh, steady, level two, I'll take her. Uh, another one. Steady, level one, I'll take you. But that's not what we're here for. We're here to speak to the ambassador. I don't have, I don't have, I don't have an embassy. Never mind, administrator. Aha! I'd like to be commissioned by Tritachion. Hmm. Okay, we gotta fly. We gotta fly to the Cinderian Dictat. Can I not just rescind that from somewhere else? Can I really not command character? <laughs> okay, looks like we gotta fly to the Dictat and be like, "Ayo, hey, I quit," and then we can come back. Okay, let's take out the pirate attack fleet. Move into engage. Continue. I don't need all of this. I think we'll leave behind... Bring in the Omens, as always. Bring in the Zephos. Yeah, that'll, we'll, be able to, we'll be able to beat them with this. I'm confident. Especially with our, with our newfound toys. Let's uh, immediately fire a missile at the Eradicate. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. This isn't the same missile anymore. So what do you do? Oh! That's a lot cooler. Oh, I like that a lot more. Okay, it doesn't quite have the same punch. But that, might, that might have some serious killing power. Once we get it, uh, once we get those shields down. Try it on a smaller ship, see how it does. Oh, oh dude, it does a lot of, oh my god, it does great. What's the refire? It's still got a pretty slow refire rate. That's my only, my only pet peeve I can see. Also, uh, let's use some advanced entropy here. Also, set those rocket bombers off, fire, fire on him. Use this. Okay, it, it's... It's interesting. It's interesting. It does a little bit of damage. It doesn't do quite as much as I want, but it is kind of a guaranteed hit. Which has also got its own things going for it. We'll try it out for a few more battles. I'm not sure if this is really quite the replacement I was uh, chalking it up to be in my head, but it's... It's interesting. Really? I think what I just want in life is like a, just like a 25-shot Reaper torpedo launcher. Those do exist. We just gotta find one. Yeah, they're not doing all that much damage, are they? Not really. Okay, let's see how it does against a less armored target, like this, uh, this ca carrier over here. And, oh, and, okay, well, well played. They pulled most of them off with flares, but it did actually do quite a bit of damage upon striking. In fairness, we were shooting it at an eradicator, which is, you know, as I've been gushing over for, uh, what was it, six, seven episodes now, it kind of, kind of just an unstoppable powerhouse of a machine. Come on, blast it. Blast it. Get that wolf out. Oh, what am I doing? I got I got the means to blast it right there. Okay, I kind of love this. Never mind. I love this missile. It's not it's not the one-shot kill that you know you'd love to see, but it's pretty good. It's pretty good. What did we lose? Another omen. Are you kidding me with this? Dude, leave my omens alone. Leave omen alone. Okay, uh, get the yeah, just get that. I can't say no. I should say, I'm gonna I really... Uh, one more. One more. Okay? One more. We're taking one more. And we actually got a level on our dude. And what I'm gonna do is get industrial planning, because this is going to give us two really important bonuses. One, all industry supply one more unit, which means we just get, you know, plus, plus, I don't even know. Let, let's say we produce five, we get 20% more production just with one click. And 50% uh, maximum value of custom ship and weapon production per month. That's really cool. What that effectively means is that our ability to produce ships and stuff from our shipyards is 50% more efficient. Early on can really mean a lot. Like, no jokes. Oh, we've uh, repaired an erratic fuel injector on our tugboat. How valuable. Uh, do you actually, do I have, do I have anything to equip you right now? To get you, like, into the fight. We got a reaper. And you know what, just take a bunch of annihilators. I hear those are interesting sometimes. Have uh, a light auto cannon. Have some Vulcans. Have another Vulcan. Up here, put some light auto cannons, dude. I'm crazy with it. Uh, you can have an assault chain gun and a light heavy auto cannon. How about that, huh? Take this away. You know, uh, this one. This one could just be auto fit. To be completely honest with you. Confirm. 
Yeah, and then we'll just we'll just re we'll reformat that when we have better materials available. I'm looking for Asconia. Show me as it's up to the right here. Oh, domain domain error probe. I don't really want to go out analyzing domain error probes. I'm more interested in everything else. Oh, okay, we've constructed light industry, and the Gobi Desert is now making a profit. Would you look at that? Uh, what was the? Oh, where's my other planet? Come on, come on! I'm lost in the menus here, and you are making a pretty tidy profit too. So what's our market share here? Two thousand for that one. One thousand three hundred. Not too much in the way. It used to be such a bunny printer. Wow. I guess there's just more competition with all these modded factions in the base game. That's a uh, the really. I mean, yeah. Look at Byzantium's popping out six of them per day. We're making two. Yeah. This is probably worth a bit of cash. If we could find a planet with a lot of organics, that could make us some real money too. Uh, your production scales with the size of your planet. So the more the more people we have, the more production we. Which makes sense, right? Like, more people to do the work. Alright, so... Air? Uh, com directory, they might be kind of pissed off at me for doing this. An aggressive helmsman, I'll take you. And we just want to build up our repertoire of offices fairly early. Administrator, I'd like to resign my Cinderian Diktat commission. And we've lost it. They, they take We took a 10 point hit to our... Our faction reputation, but everybody else likes us a little bit more, which is fun. It's mostly their enemies, I think. All right, that's not what I'm here for. Let's uh, let's let's go ahead and reassign our captains, and I'll also give them new names. Ray Ramiro, you handsome bastard. Your new name is the Senate. I'm just going to call you Senate. Perfect. Uh, three Loma Prieta. Your new name is Cut Beef. Cut. E, cut, cut, mm, cut, beef. Go, am. There we go. And Voriana Siberia, your new name is... Da -da 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 -da. Who's next on the list? A Dutchy fanboy. There we go. 15th time's the charm. Perfect. Oh, and we got one more here. Let me, let me grab... Okay, who's next? Who's next? Knee Cruncher. I'm going to put the... The ones with impact mitigation are definitely going to be taking on the Eradicators. They're meant to take the hits. As we've discussed, uh, you are pretty good for combat endurance. You should fly a strike. You have combat endurance. No, it's going to be the next thing you get if we get it on the level up. Uh, with one of those as your main thing, I'm going to get you to do some more damage, man. I want you. I want you hitting like a like a truck, and then some some speedy boy. I think you, know, you definitely definitely take that guy. I want a speedy boy. You know what? Let's give you a, let's give you a flight wing. Of your own. A little bit of moment, a little bit of movement, a little bit of speed doesn't hurt for sure. All right, but you do need to be very careful accepting and dropping commissions just in the base game. Uh, factions do not take it well. Like, they really don't like it when you stop working for them, especially if you start working for an enemy shortly after, which is literally what we're about to do. Uh, I think we have enough reputation with, with the Cinderian Diktat that we can stay friendly with them. But now, of course, of course, however, if the, if Tritachion goes to war with the Diktat, we will, we will then also go to war with the Diktat. Uh, but and as long as we don't blow up their ships, they should forgive us when the war ends. Right, rephrase, if the war ends. Administrator, I would like to be commissioned by Tritachion. 65k flat rate, a little bit higher, very nice. Okay, lovely, lovely. And I would like to point out that our Tritachion commission is... 300 reward per frigate. Damn it. Okay, we got a slightly higher stipend. I, damn it. I've definitely seen that number go higher. Maybe we just got to kill more stuff. It, it definitely goes higher the more work you do for them. So maybe we just need to get some more hours in here. With our commission secured and our bank account looking a little flush than before, I think we should head our way over to the Galatia Academy and start the game's main storyline. There is actually a massive benefit to getting it done, like a really big one. And that's what we're heading, that's kind of why I'm doing this, more than anything else. I'm going to drop in on the Galatia Giant itself, and what would you, would you believe it? There's the Galatia Academy, right over there. Alright, I will uh, return the data core. Uh, I would like to get a reward, get a reward, 18,000, thank you. Okay, so, so we're going to pretend that didn't happen. 
right? This is going to be, this is our very first meeting with the Galatia Academy. I would like to leave, uh, join it again. <clears throat> the stark white halls of the Galatia Academy station crawl past in slow magisterial rotation. The ivory tower looms before you. Your quest to the docking queue is approved. Your comms officer helpfully mutes the chirpy automated vid feed presenting a boat Olderized history of the <laughs> Galatia Academy and its role in providing education and research to the Persian sector while remaining above political influence. The landing promenade is filled with modest civilian transports, a few high-end personal craft, and at the far end, a row of freighters offloading supplies. A junior academy agent greets you in landing in the landing lounge with a promotional paraphernalia in hand. Greetings, Captain. Perhaps you are an alumni. Have you considered donating to a scholarship trust with the Academy? Uh, not quite. I would like to request a meeting with the Provost. The Academy agent makes a quiet request through their personal comms and gives you a patient look. The new Provost is very, very busy. New administration after the, um, ahem, <clears throat> recent unpleasantness, you know. This could take some time, days, weeks sometimes. You might want to leave your comm ID with me and come back safely. The comms unit chimes in softly. Yes? Really? I mean, yes, we'll, we'll come up immediately. The agent turns to you. Provost Bird, we'll see you now. Right now. Please follow me, Captain. You are led through a discreet, secure access door to a series of passages that bypass the public concourses. You are brought to a travel lift, which activates the Academy's at the Academy agent's presence and a step inside at the Academy agent's encouraging nod. The lift pod is wrapped by diamond matrix Oh, excuse me? The lift pod is wrapped by diamond matrix through which you could... Oh, diamond dash matrix. Okay, sorry. Sorry, I'm back. Hold on. The lift pod is wrapped by diamond matrix through which you can only watch the canyon-like sweep of the plazas pass by, filled with crowds of students, academics, and technicians. Raising your gaze, you see that the pod is approaching a tiered substructure, which seems to hang over the cur curve of the station interior. The pod slows, and you shuffle to adjust to the local grav effect of the field gradient. You must be near the core of the Galatia station. Cool. A guard wearing a mirrored faceplate dismisses the junior agent and usses you through the front doors to an antechamber filled with small groups of people who are presumably mating, waiting to meet with the provost. They have perfect hair and perfect skin, unmarred by the radiational burns that mark a spacer. Those cybernetics you can spot are conscientiously stylish adornments rather than crude augments. Many have brought their young progeny with them. The stench of wealth and influence is palpable. It's a damn hype house. Heads turn as you are led past all of them towards a set of large doors which appear to be inlaid with wood from real trees. What? Y'all rich? You feel their glares on you like a point defense fire on heavy armor. Wow, edgy, bud. Edgy. I'm gonna smile and wink at them. You're special and you know it. Okay, I've, I've lost a bit of um, uh, rep reputation with a couple people. You enter the office as the doors close silently behind you. Provost Athena Bard turns to acknowledge your entrance while concluding a call via her desk tablet. Ancient wooden shelves, again with the trees. For real. Paper books. Gleams. Dark. <laughs> Aiden. <laughs> I need to read that again, I'm sorry. Ancient wooden shelves. For real paper books. Wow. Gleam darkly in subdued light, emanating tastefully from nowhere. The shelves are only half stocked from crates scattered around the office. A brass orrery of the Galatia system adorns a plinth in the center of a seating cluster. Parchments mounted behind the provost's desk are displayed intimidatingly. Uh, they display intimidating intellectual rankings, their seals of authenticity softly glowing. I apologize for the mess, she says, having noted your examination. I've only just moved office. By the way, I'm very sorry that I'm stumbling over some of the words. Not only is uh, D for Lysdexia, but um, your boy is, is currently 1.32 a.m. Um, I'm a little tired. Before you speak, she raises a hand. You're not here to set up a donation. Why then? Because it is very much in the interest to know about the up-and-coming mercenary captain who corrected the unfortunate situation created by my ambitious but incautious predecessor. Now, for those of you who don't know, the tutorial of this game basically has you resolve an experiment gone wrong that's kind of shut down the hyperspace access points for this system. You are the captain who 
sort of uh, saves the day and restores hyperspace access for Galatia to the rest of the sector. It's kind of like a lifeline, right? If you're cut off, you're dead. Uh, a pause. This institution is not devoted to purely theoretical work. She forms a cradle with her hands as if to hold an idea as she explains it. For what use is knowledge if it does not give us the power and wisdom to change the world for the better? She leaves the question hanging in the air for a moment. What use is knowledge if it does not give us the power, wisdom, and change the world for, to change the world for the better? Knowledge is good for its own sake. Okay, libertarian. Uh, knowledge uplifts the human spirit. Okay. <laughs> Liberal. <laughs> uh, knowledge can bring also be very profitable. Okay, ANCAP. Knowledge brings us closer to the creator. Okay, TradCap. Um, let's get... Let's say nothing. She brings her hands apart. My point is that the Galatia Academy should make use of someone like you. Someone capable. Discreet. And here she pauses. A tactic for emphasis she appears to employ often. And very well paid. I do not wish to make the same mistake as my predecessor. If one wants work done properly, one must provide appropriate incentive. He leans back and looks at you. Done speaking. For real this time. Probably. Me. I'm interested. What do you need done? I'm, dude, I'm taking you on. I shall put you in contact with Academian Elvis Sebastian. He will be your liaison with the Academy. You will receive a few mundane tasks from various departments in the Academy so that we may build a working rapport as well as provide you with the funds you require to bring your fleet up to my standards. He looks over the spectacles at you. Most of all, I require evidence of trust. I intend to remain provost here for a long time, and the productive relationships are built on trust. We will speak again before long, I'm sure. He looks out at the dimmed windows of the great halls of the Galatia Academy. You cannot imagine what we shall accomplish. Hmm. She smiles now, not for you, but for herself. All right, let's talk to Sebastian. The comms connect after a moment. Oh, hello, it's you. The contact almost looks surprised at your calling, but manages to launch into an upbeat introduction. My name is Elvis Sebastian, the new provost, that is. Provost Bird, assigned me to be your liaison with the Academy. I hope you're as excited to work with me as I am to be working with you. Nice to meet you, Academian. Academician? Academician, sorry. Uh, nice to meet you, Academician. Right, yes, um, he seems nervous to be meeting a real-life space captain. You idly wonder how he even got to this position, especially considering that it is in space. Presumably he's met one before. Different departments within the Galatia Academy tell me what they need done, then I cooperate with freelancers such as yourself to procure the necessary services. Oh, and I run jobs by the finance office. We have to make sure you get paid. That's very important. I couldn't agree more, Sebastian. At any time, there may be various jobs open to you. You just have to check with me. Well, sometimes there might be no jobs, but if they're all fulfilled, you read something on a tablet, checks notes. But um, it looks like Provost Bad wants you to have... Bird? Bad? Bird? Wants you to have the first priority for everything that comes up. She must like you. All right, so let's see what's available. We can get a VIP transport. We have to move a student from one location to another. 59,000 credits, very easy money. Uh, ask about the instrument package recovery. That's quite far away. I'll take it anyway. Ask about the nebula scan. Equally far away. We'll take it. Any available jobs? No? Okay, cool. Let's uh, let's knock out some academy tasks, man. And then we'll call that a, call that a cool episode, I think. Jump out of the system. I'm definitely going to need more fuel in order to pull this off and more supplies. So let's head south and get that. But first, we have to look at our accepted missions. Let's head over to 99ES and, and sit, hand over this, uh, this VIP. 59,000 credits, that's going to buy the fuel we need to do the other two. Oh wow, and Barbershop 2 has had its degraded shields repaired. Nice, that thing's going to go down a lot less often. Degraded shields is one of the worst demods. Your shields take, I think it's like, it's almost double damage. It might be 50% more damage. Uh, and they lose, uh, f they, they generate more flux as well. Well, ah, shit. The pirates, oh, these guys want to talk to me? Hmm. The pirate captain saunters into view as the comms line flickers to clarity. Captain, are you in such a hurry? She says theatrically. Let us talk for a moment about a small matter. She leans in and you can almost smell the acrid sweat and vacuum burn. We are here to take your very special little passenger. 
No one will be hurt, it's a simple kidnap and ransom job, we are civilized folk after all, but it's not worth dying and killing for. I will say I'm working for the Warlord Cutter. I'll spend a story point to save a bit of cash here. The bravado and theatre evaporate like the sunward frost. Yes, of course, Captain. She struggles to regain some of her previous composure. I do apologize, profoundly, for the delay I've caused. Please. She sweeps her arm in a broad gesture. Do be on your way and give my closest and warmest regards to the Warlord. You snap the comms links off while the pirate is still attempting an awkward half bow. And with that, we are out of here. Execute that scan. Oh, nice. And our Plundiva has repaired its erratic fuel injector, which means it uses nominally, and I do mean nominally, not much at all, actually, <laughs> less fuel. But still pretty good to have. Let's uh, let's drop into Unspace, and let's check out the... Sorry, again, I've been reading so much Adrian Tchaikovsky. I, I, I cannot think of it as anything other than Unspace. Let's turn on the sensor and see what we have in the region. Okay, I'm getting strong signal into this yellow star. Problem is, if we go into any of these stars, we will actually uh, lose the the, the the scanner. That one's pointing. What I'm assuming is that, okay. So we know that the Texcat, the Janaham, Janaham, uh, the Umo Talik, Talak, and the Cherfort systems are worth our time. Okay, let's pop in. Get some real damn money. Oh, here we go. Oh, we're going to get all our fuel back. Oh, this is going to be gorgeous. Oh, uh, we could actually pick up a civilian transport here. This is really good for moving large numbers of people, so I'm going to grab that. Uh, we don't need another mule that we can scrap for some fuel. Very nice. Up to 900 again. We want to get that up to about 1,000. What is that? A space junk... Space Hulk class junk ship. Cool. That is really cool. Um, consider ship recovery. It doesn't fit on screen. We couldn't possibly man it. I think not. Begin the salvage operation. It's gigantic. Rip it for parts. 220 supply, just from that thing. Location of a derelict ship. Cool. Oh, let's turn on this comm relay. Maybe we can uh, maybe we can get some missions from out here. Bunch of bounty bunch of bounties. Got a puddle jumper, we got a buffalo freighter. Ah, strip it strip it for parts. This planet looks like it has some ruins around it. it does not. I've been lied to. Does this one have some ruins around it, or are we just we just in an asteroid belt? It is habitable. The arid world. Looks very cool. It is arable. I'm sorry, it is habitable. Probably not arable. Lost some heavy machinery there. Ouch. No, give me the sensor anyway. I want to, I want to see stuff. We've got something inside the star. It's going to boost our sensor range by 700. Basically doubling it. That's an eradicator. That's my favorite... It's in pretty good nick. Grab it. I will never say no to an eradicator. I want like eight of them. I think that's going to be my my sweet spot number. We're on six now, I think. Anything else in this? There's a mining station. We can go pop. That's going to have some fuel and resources for us. Oh my god, look at that. We got our very first nano forge. I was, uh, there were some ruins on this little, this little tiny planet inside this asteroid belt. And we got it. That's so cool. Rip this ship for parts. We didn't get the mining station yet. I missed it. But yes, we got our first nanoforge. So what nanoforges allow you to do is... Oh, we get some fuel tanks. Oh, nice. 1,000 fuel. We're sorted. What nanoforges allow you to do is take a, a fairly bad ship-producing industry and turn it into a slightly less bad ship-producing industry. Now, I don't need 17,000 ore worth uh, probably about two... Credits each on the on the market, so we're just gonna leave that behind. I will, however, take a military VPC. Ooh, the conflict package sells for 100k for a reason. We can now produce our own heavy armaments. That we we just unlocked infinite money glitch basically.
Uh, let's open the pods. 199 crew, not bad. Imperial ship blueprint package, absolutely. I see that we've got a, a like a dreadnought in the mix there. That's gonna be cool. Don't need all that food. Take all this though. What have we got here? Uh, debris field. Don't really care about debris fields too much. Let's go pick up this Nebula class ship though. Hey, another lieutenant. That's awesome. Hey, just in time to fill our new eradicator. What do you do? You're steady. You do missiles. You do energy weapons, huh? Uh, so you would actually be a better fit on this one. Perfect. Okay, the system was slightly less crazy for a cool stuff to grab. But uh, eh, there was there was some there was some goodies in there. Uh, the biggest one really is this this deal maker hollow suite. I, I cannot express to you just how incredibly powerful that thing is. Was there any tech in this system? Now I don't remember. I'm not seeing much though. Ah, uh, there's a oh oh no we should not go oh shit I seen it I saw it. Okay, so this is a coronal hyper shunt. It is a class of mega structure. That uh, once powered the unfathomable edges of the domain. We might die now. I'm going to have to hit a quick save because we genuinely might die now. When you see a, a coronal hyper shunt, there is a chance, a very small chance, but a chance for a basically unbeatable at this point in the game AI to spawn in and hunt you down. In which case, the only thing you can do to survive is to get. There it is. There it is. Get inside. Ah, I'm going to die here. Okay. Okay. Accept the comm request. Target Jupiter Pratt. Data stores, registered source of power, found to permit unsubsumed existence data stores. Submit. It, no doubt. Same. Same. I, I will offer some cat photos I have lying around for their database. Uh, it does not like cute cats. This is absolutely unforgivable. It's time for this thing to die. Continue the fight. I, I genuinely will probably lose half my fleet here. Um, maybe we get lucky and it's it's it rolled low on the damage, but I'm... Oh man, I'm kind of shitting my pants a bit here. Uh, we'll send in what I've got selected. Let's see what makes it out the other side. Okay, so there's three stages to these things. If this is stage... If this is... So there's like... They break apart into smaller ships each time. If this is a fully formed one, we're dead. And I don't think it is, just looking at it. I think this is a stage two ship. Uh, this is indeed the secondary stage. Like one of the, So like the main ship would break into two of these and then this will break into two fighters. Killing this thing might not be that tough. Although as you can see, it's already maxed out that thing's shields. But killing, oh God, man. Killing the, uh, killing the remaining fighters that come out of this thing is gonna be a much, a, a bigger game. To be sure. I, I've had so many games ended, like Iron Man games, ended by these things. If you see a coronal hype, if you see a blue star, and you got a whole bunch of like sensor pings right by the star's surface, don't go looking at it. It's almost certainly a coronal hyper shunt, and you're almost certainly dead now. Okay, shoot him. Blast him. Make him regret he ever came home. Oh, there we go, there we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. Okay, we're knocking it out. We're knocking it out. Oh, man, I want these weapons, too. We're actually going to beat it. I think it rolled too low. You'll see that we're not done yet. It's going to split into two ships. Oh, God, and a bunch of fighter craft. And honestly, those fighter craft are probably the most scary thing. Those little, those little fighters. Oh, God, it's disabled every single weapon on my ship. Except the missiles. We've still got those. Shoot at him. Shoot at him, boys. Please. They're so strong. They're equipped with dual phase lances, which uh, absolutely shred armor. Make no mistake, we are still in a lot of danger. We've managed to kill one of the little ships. The battle won't end until we actually kill all of them. They're considered their own entities with this. Okay, cool. We got one of the frigates down. Did we actually win? No chance. Oh, my omen is being bullied over there, but it can't get through its shields by the look of it. Nope, there are still more fighters. Right, because every time we kill one of the stupid frigates, it's going to spawn two more waves of fighters. Oh, lord. Uh, okay, where do I want the Odyssey? I want the Odyssey fighting. I want the Odyssey fighting the fighters, I think. 
I think it's more important that we take out these things. There we go, we're doing some real damage here. They also heal themselves, which is a little bit infuriating. Well, that might be that actually might be a different end game enemy. But yeah, eventually, if you know, if you want to take over the Crotal Hyper Shunt, you got to fight like six of these, I think, uh, depending on your difficulty level. I think on normal, you only have to fight one. Okay, successfully disabled. Now we just got to knock out the remaining fighter craft, as well as those two up there. I'm going to send the Odyssey out for the ones in the north. The remaining fleet can handle this. Okay, so we didn't take too much damage, and I think that's largely because we. I really do think that's entirely down to the fact that we overdeployed here. If we if we if we hadn't taken it as seriously, we'd probably be dead now. Like my that ship would have been able to one v one the Odyssey without any trouble, even though it's like a fraction of the size. They are so so powerful, and I mean it's meant to be. It's an end game boss, right? Okay, he's been taken out. Awesome. Oh god, what's left? Oh, there's one fighter left. We can't leave until it's dead. Could you please kill it? Strike? Get in there? It's dead. Okay. Claim victory. Pick through the wreckage. What do we got? We got a Cryo Flamer. That's not my favorite thing. Oh, the Resonator. These are really good. Uh, Antimatter SRM Launcher. Incredible weapon. Mini Pulsar. Incredible weapon. Rift Lance is the best weapon that these things can drop, in my opinion. And the Shock Repeater is fine. Fine. But the Rift Lance, that's something crazy, man. It's just like a super-powered beam. All right. Get me in... Do the Jonah Ham star system. Oh, and we actually have a new pilot, right? Who needs a name? It's uh, Opiemi Nares? I don't think so. Your new name, sir, is Ribo. Okay, here we are with our final Galatia Academy mission. Uh, we're also almost completely out of supplies now, which is a little scary. We have recovered the instrument package. Fantastic. We've got to get that thing back to the Galatia Academy, though. I'm going to have to scuttle this ship, though, I think, just to get those supplies back. Yeah, that's the that's the, the extra Phaeton we picked up, and I, I think it's already gone, to be honest with you. And we are producing six points. Why are we consuming so much supply? Holy hell. Lady supply use. No more information. Wonderful. Thank you. Very helpful. Okay, we gotta get our asses to Mars, man. Um, none of the areas around us unfortunately support any tech, really. So what's our what's the nearest what's the nearest jump home? But I don't want that. Sorry, I, the, sometimes the menus in this game can be a little confusing. Uh, I want to go here. I think that genuinely is the closest point to us. Outer terminus. Uh, Twenty-eight light years. Rampusa is 29. It's basically the same distance to go straight home. And I think we should jump. It is going to zero out our supply. It's going to need a lot more fuel to do jumps like this, but it's going to speed this up considerably. Alright, then I need to turn on... I don't have another tech locator. Shit. We are formally out of supplies. We're probably going to lose some ships here. We could, we could risk going down into ROG. And seeing if there's something in there we can salvage. If it's got a medium beacon, it's probably got some stuff. We don't want to fight, but maybe there's some planets we can pick clean. You know, just, to, just to get us jumping. We're probably going to lose that Hyperion frigate, though. If I had to guess. And what have we got over here? We got a, a weapons cache. I don't think I'll be able to, to loot that with these guys chasing me. And the ship's dead. Okay, no surprises there. Minus supply cache. That's what we need. Are you are you fightable? Not in my current state, you're not. Yeah, we're gonna lose all these small ships. We're just gonna have to mothball them. That way they won't crash at least. Don't have to spend any supplies maintaining them. You have to mothball all of you so you don't get destroyed. Same for you. Same for you, but this now means we won't be able to hyper warp jump, and we won't be able to transverse jump either. We're going to have to go through wormholes as normal. I mean, we're going to take a longer route around here. Nothing in this system. At least we're not out of fuel. Then we'd be really screwed. Oh, hold on, hold on. Bunch of signatures up here. It's a debris field. 
Uh, do not consider ship recovery. Strip it for parts. Thank you. There you go. Keep the lights on just a little bit longer. We can conduct this survey quickly. Yep. Only five extensive ruins. Please have 700. Uh, oh, uh, I can send intel to Magellan Protectorate. Why not? Explore the ruins. I'm begging you. A 33. An alpha core. Oh my god. Alpha cores are amazing. They can, they can actually run entire colonies if you want them to. But uh, it's not always the best idea. You know, AI did take over. Who's to say it might not happen again? Wink, wink. But I mean, it is free colony, I guess, if that's how you want to look at it. Technically true. I got caught. Okay. We're going to spend a story point to perform some limited emergency repairs. And I think I can kill this with a couple of eradicators. So let's move into engage. Uh, I cut through that one because we got to get the hell out of here. And I got to focus on flying. God damn it, I got caught. Okay, this time... We're going to have to execute a series of dangerous maneuvers. We are we are really, really in a bad place now. Um, extensive ruins available here. Please. Please, give me something good. Sure, Ludic Path, you can have the intel. I don't care right now. Another Alpha Core. Amazing find. Genuinely. Not what we need, though. Okay, I've disabled repairs on some of these ships, so let's mothball that. Gonna have to mothball you. We cannot afford to mothball this. This is going to have to just get fixed. This is going to have to get fixed. Because we need the storage space, you see. I will have to dump some cargo. Keep the lights on here. We mothball you. You only count for about a hundred. Uh, about a hundred or so. Repair space. So no, we're going to have to just repair you guys for a bit. Oh, God. This is scary. This is really scary. Okay. Um... We need to go to the cargo screen and just dump jettison some trash. Get rid of all this ore, I think. Easiest way to do that. Okay, keep flying. I'm gonna get out here and we're just gonna get the heck out of dock. Oh my god, is that a is that a Legion class battle cruiser? It is. Explore. Consider ship recovery. Take it. Leave. Get out of here, please. Okay, and mothball that thing right away. We have it we have a capital ship. Another one, anyway. The remnants will not follow us. Alright. We are two days away from home and we've got a bunch of hyperwave storms we cannot afford to hit between us and that. Uh, suspend all repairs. You continue repairing. You continue repairing. We cannot let those die. Everything else just hold on. We're almost there. Ironically enough, I spent all of my supply to stop myself being killed by that coronal hypershunt demon. And, um, <laughs> well, would you believe it? The Coronal Hypershot Demon ended up getting us killed. God damn it. We're gonna have to use an emergency burn because we're gonna get pulled through the slipstream. This is us. This is home. This is home. Get in there. Come on, baby. Oh, God, the ships are getting damaged. Get in there. Do I have any more repair packs? Do I have any more repair packs? No, they're all out. Shit, I spent them all. A lot of bounties to claim at some point. Get me the heck home. ASAP. And I'm talking I'm not talking about Rocky. Oh god, we made it. We made it. Okay. Okay. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick up we're gonna pick up a thousand supply for a hundred K, right? We're gonna go to storage, we're gonna dump everything over here. We'll sort it out later. All of that goes. Okay, makes sense so far, right? Then, then, uh, freaking fill me up on fuel. I don't even care anymore. This is a nightmare. We're going to unmothball all of my ships. Cannot believe we nearly lost everything there. Oh my god. The real question is, is 100k going to be enough to repair all of you? Resume all repairs, just barely. Just absolutely barely. You're interesting. You're interesting. We have a Legion class battle carrier. These things are incredible. They do a lot of damage, that's for sure. Uh, you've lost your ship, so why don't you take this? Enjoy it, Jack. Jack Smallman. Lieutenant. Let's get you some Shellhawk UAC large range auto, uh, auto cannons. My god, look at them. 
insane. We have a degeneration cycler. That's a medium. We want uh, these are. This is a medium slot. That's medium slot. Yeah, take take a take a hyper velocity driver instead. I think. And over here, I want to put in some flak cannons on the fronts. We'll put in a couple of Vulcan cannons on the sides and all the way up. That way it can shoot down any incoming ordnance. We want to make sure... Oh, it's Tritachion. Nice. It's got advanced flux capacitors. Another thousand flux capacity and 50 vent. Pretty good. For free. It's pretty good. I'm going to build in some heavy armor. And I'm going to build in some... A wing comm suite, I think. I think that's going to be really good for the ship. Yeah, so he's going to have a whole bunch of dudes. Now. Right? Signing an officer to this vessel establishes a squadron that develops skills over time. Perfect. These are drones. A Zephyr 9th Gen Wanza. You don't say. I'm going to just go with some broadswords, I think. Some broadswords and some Kopesh rocket launchers. That looks fine to me. Uh, this doesn't seem to be working. Have I goofed? No, the first Bronze Tigers has been established under the command of Jack Smallwin. Alright, so it has it has worked. It just isn't showing their portraits. I, I assume it is going to be working. I assume. Alright, and let's just uh, max out those vents. We actually got quite a bit of, of room to work with here. Definitely auxiliary thrusters then. Uh, let's get this bad boy a some recovery shuttles so we lose less crew. And what else do I care about here? Not all that much, to be honest. Oh, oh, it needs to have augmented drive field. That's what I should have built in. I'm an idiot. I'm a fool. Yeah, okay, I'm a fool. We're not going to be able to have either of this because I, need, I should have built in augmented drive fields. It absolutely has to have this, and we can only build in two uh, S mods, so that's the ones they're going to get. Oh, we actually have a missile pod here we can fit in. For 25, huh? Let's get two Mervs. Yeah, I'm a Merv enjoyer. Alright, order a sign. This thing's going to be a powerhouse of the front line. 984 supply to get us there, so 100k. We basically spent 100k on a capital ship. I am very happy with those numbers, actually. I'm very happy with those numbers, actually. Let's test this thing out now. Deploy a couple of eradicators alongside it and see how it copes. There's some there's some pirates. I'm gonna send out a phase frigate just because I like seeing it work. Let's see how you cope with the with the pirate incursion. So this thing's an interesting one. It's kind of like a wall. If you have three or four of these Legion battle cruisers in a line, they will they will do really well. If they're on their own, they do very poorly. They've got if they've got absolutely no defenses behind them. Uh, you kind of want a bunch of them in a row where nothing can get around them. And then they they, they excel. Because they've got decent flux capacity and they, ha they have a lot, like a lot of front armor. A lot more than the Odyssey does, that's for sure. And that's already a tank. And I'm, I'm seeing the names above all of my various fighter craft. And yes, I, I, do, indeed, I do indeed think that that, uh, that system is working. It's great. Looks like this phase frigate's doing its work too. Oh, nice. It actually got a knockout. Unfortunately, it has decided to get the knockout uh, <laughs> after using up all of its missiles, but, you know, which would have would have been able to take advantage of that knockout because this thing's got crazy amounts of armor. Oh my god, and it swarmed. Yep, Legion class battle carrier. Kind of, kind of massively awesome. Very good, yes. Oh, what's that? Another eradicator? You shouldn't have. Oh, well, that's, uh, that's just unfair. It really do be your own sometimes. Yep. That's honestly just unfortunate. Okay, let's open up that comm directory to speak to Sebastian. There we go. And uh, what are the jobs you got for me? Imprisoned researcher? We'll take that one. Data retrieval? We'll take that one. We just we take everything right now, okay? Uh, but we're going to have to deal with that in the next episode. It is currently... Yeah, it's well past my bedtime. Thank you guys very much for hanging out. And by well past my bedtime, I mean that it is, it is quite literally the next day. So uh, hope to see you all in the next one, uh, whenever that happens to be. And uh, we're going to continue doing donuts in the sky. Cheers. And of course, a huge thank you to our channel members and patrons for this month. 
Kelly Ananas, Colby Bow82, Old Man Tater, Frickin' Friendly Beaver, Knee Cruncher, Riley David, Badass Beast, Pratt and Perush, Rivo, Charlie Weber, Mermix, Officer C4, Not K Author, Adachi Fanboy, Couch Potato, Rob, LCG Canyon Sahar, Jack Smallman, Cut Beef Go Ham, I'm Alpha, The Senate, Richard Berry, Ragnar, Skull Crew, and Depoyo44. You guys rock.